Hi everyone, my name is Karen Tamir and I live in Canada. I am here for the Flying Unicorn to record, a, 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 I mean to show a new show today, special for Thanksgiving. It's a fall layout that I've created and that I'm going to show you how I did. Um, so without further ado, let's start. And I'm going to turn the camera around so everybody can see. Let me know if you can hear me and see me well, please. Okay, wait. Takes a few minutes until I get this all organized. And it's crooked. Wait, okay, there we go. You guys see it well? Hi, Alda. Now we don't have snow right now, but it's cold. Buffalo has snow, but we don't have snow, so it's nice. Okay, so here's the layout we are going to be creating today. I mean, I'll be creating and you'll be watching and hopefully getting some ideas of what to do. I've used the Seven Dots Studio Collection called Thoughts, uh, Thoughts Keeper, which I'm almost sure is available in the store. And um, yeah, she has all the collections, all the new Seven Dots collections that are truly beautiful. And uh, I'm sure you will enjoy working with each and every one of them. But this one is a fall theme. We recently took pictures of our family in the fall. It was about a month ago. And now the, the trees have no... Um, they have no leaves anymore so this is just from this is just from recent uh, recent photo and the paper that i use as the background is called uh, oh thoughts keeper i think number two they just numbered so it's easy to remember this is thoughts keeper number two i do like to do my layouts with uh plainish kind of background just so we can build a lot of texture in the back and this is what I'll do here today okay so here is a paper I'm showing you and what I did is I used this stencil which is a crafters workshop it's a wood grain stencil I'm not exactly sure of the name but I'm guessing it's wood grain it's called wood grain and I used uh, the new texture paste gold crackle from Finnebear's Prima and I just created this is I just created a pattern on the background this is basically what's gonna take the longest if you see the cream it's very creamy unlike the other one the um, Wendy Vecchi's which is a little bit more like matte this is a little bit more shiny but it does dry matte and it does crackle which is really nice so I'm going to apply it with a spatula and um, what I did is I tried to apply it in two different areas. One was this area over here and I tried to get one of the wood grain like straight lines and then I moved it, I moved it to the other side. So I'll start with this and I'm going to create uh, lines. Now you want to make sure that when you're using a stencil you don't want to have a square once you finish using it. So don't go all the way up to the edge of the paper. Don't go all the way up to the other edge. You know, just try to kind of um, use it in a way. You see, I start right over here and I, then I go up a little bit in the middle and then down again on the side. What it does is that it gives it an uneven pattern and that way you don't end up with a perfect square at the end. Again, in mixed media, it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, you, you can make mistakes and it's not a big deal. But I just like it that it's a little bit uneven. Another thing you see about this paste is that it looks as if it's not going to dry up shining. It looks like it's not going to crackle. It's just a, the way the color is. However, it dries like, it doesn't even look goldish here. It looks kind of an ochre kind of color. But when it dries, <clears throat> it dries in a in a gold shiny texture which is really nice now I'm gonna lift it up a little bit now this is a trick that I've been I learned when I want to use the, the stencil but I don't want it to like kind of smush the other area of my project I end up kind of holding it up I mean it's not really a trick it's just common sense but I'm just showing you what I do so you know and I'm kind of hold it up so it doesn't uh, interfere and then I um, 
I do the other pattern on the other side. This is a way how I move my stencil around when, especially when I use the six by six stencils, which are really small. And let's say I want to create a bigger pattern. I'm able to do this by, by uh, moving the stencil around and holding it up. Obviously I don't have two hands to hold it, which is the only problem with that. Okay, now, as you see, I have the two, sorry, I have the two pieces of um, things, and this is going to take a little while to dry, so I'm just going to put it aside for a minute. Oops. I'm just going to put this aside for a minute, clean my spatula. I know I put this stencil aside, I'm going to have to wash it later, but... I'm going to put it aside while I do some other things to prepare for my layout. And this is a good way that you can do how you do like mixed media because things take so long to dry up that you can actually uh, put something aside and then um, and then come back to it later once you've done other things for your layout. Um, one of the things, oh, so I'm reading here that the issue with the crackle paste. So one of the things about crackle paste, you have to, in order for them to crack, you need to have a very thin layer of them. You can have a very thick layer. And this specific crackle paste cr uh, crackles very, um, very, like a small crack. So there are some other ones that crack a really bit, uh, crackle a little bit bigger. But what you want to do is you don't want to, I mean, the impatient thing to do is go and dry it right away. But that's not what I do. I let it wait a little bit. And once it's a little bit settled, then you go and you dry it. So that's a trick for you to have. I mean, impatience is not going to get us anywhere. I know we're in a tight uh, 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 limit of time. We're limited in time. So we'll, hopefully this will crackle just as much. But I will show you how it actually crackled in the other ones just to make sure that you understand what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to actually, let's see if I can actually get it. Oops, no, that's not going to work, huh? Because it's going to, no, it's going to, going to let me, it's going to be too dark for me to bring it up. It actually has a really nice crackle. You can actually see it in the, um, in the, in the close-ups of the, uh, on the blog. It's just really hard to see the crackles here. Okay, so the other paper I use, I'm going to put this one aside, okay? And I'm going to... Just give it, this is the other paper I use. It is also it's a thought thoughts keeper number six. It actually has a lot of different um, cutouts that you can do. And what I did is I cut out a few different area, areas of it. I cut out the moments part and this one with the feathers. And I think I also cut out the. Let me check. Yeah, I cut out this one that looks like a cue card or something like that. So um, I actually. I think I say actually a lot, and, and I don't know why, but I do. So I'm being lazy, and I don't feel like getting my cutter, just because it's just you have to measure too much. This is just easier. I know it's not perfectly straight. It also kill a little bit of time since we have to let the things dry. Okay, and, now, and this is basically what I do while my things dry. Um, I cut things. So I like layering lots of, I like making lots of layers on my layout. And one of the ways I do it is usually every, almost every collection has these type of papers where there is um, one kind of, um, um, kind of uh, plain, plain papers or design papers. And then you have things like, this is called like calling cards where you can use them to layer. And I use, this is basically what I use to layer. I use these I cut squares and I like layering under the picture. It's almost like a frame, what we used to call matting before. Uh, some of us, I mean, I mean, some people still mat perfectly around. Sometimes I do that, but if I don't want to do a perfect matting around the the picture, I what I do is I I basically mat it with a few papers. Okay, and whoops. You see, as you can see, it's not perfect at all, and nobody's going to notice or see this. Um, great. Okay. Now, I like, of course, edging my papers. Let me get rid of this garbage. Um, edging my papers with some brown, just because the um, the brown um, the browns are so nicely for the fall. This is dark bark from chalk edges from Prima. 
and I'm, any brown ink would do. I'm just lightly edging the, the corners of the, the edges of the, of the papers. Yeah, Jennifer, this is a really nice collection. It's very like soothing. The, I also like the, the other two that came out are also really, really nice. Maybe hopefully they'll go on sale maybe on, um, during the sale next week. Okay, so what I did is I'm going to get the photo too. And I did a photo of my family kind of holding hands, walking through in one direction. So the other photo I'm going to use, I'm rulerless. No rulers, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I don't want to. Okay, this is the other photo. It's kind of us walking away. I just thought, just to, so I don't do the exact same one. Again, no rulers. So maybe I'll make a little border around here. I know it's not straight. I'm sorry. You know what? I am not a perfectionist. Some people are, but I just don't care. Sorry about that. It's not bad, actually. For, for no ruler, I'm doing not bad. I kind of, you know what I did? You can actually line up your scissors by by pushing the blade against the paper and it actually cuts it straight, as straight as possible. I've learned that because I've been very lazy not wanting to get my rulers out. Anyways, okay, so these are the, the little papers that I'm using and I kind of layered them with the picture. I love using my foam tape. Even though I tried using the cardboard paper, I just really love my foam tape. It's just much easier. I know cardboard is cheaper, but I just can't help myself with these ones. So what I did is that I really wanted the, the moments word to be at the bottom. So I kind of layered it like this. And the reason why I'm doing this now, doing this now is because I actually, oops, it's too long. Um, um wrapped uh these this cord around this jute vine around so i'm going to do that while everything else is drying and the next one i am going to here this one goes kind of around here so they're all peeking out a little bit this is what i like about about this you can actually make all the papers peek from behind the photo and we see just a little bit of each and let's start putting some tape behind this. Okay. Am I behind on the chat? It looks like I'm behind on the chat. Not that I know. Oh. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Where was I? I have to line it up properly. Do I go back and forth? line that mm -hmm. very good and I use foam tape just because I like giving some uh, depth and texture and eh, no texture depth to the photo and also to the layers and that really the foam tapes really helps I know we use it for so many different things but it's just really nice to use it like this mm -hmm. oops sorry I... somebody's sick I see okay and keep up with all the whole chat there we go so it kind of sticks out in and I think it's crooked see the crookedness I don't like it might be my cutting and this happens a lot but I don't like it when it's crooked cutting is might be off but crookedness I don't like sorry guys oh it's too taped too stuck okay it's dripping everywhere but don't worry Nobody's going to see the rippings. It's all going to hide under my layout. There, good. And perfect. Okay. So this is going to be, this is how I frame the photo. I don't like having it like perfectly framed, but as you can see, I have different layers framing it. And then I'm going to get my jute line. And what I did is I wrapped this around and then I got a bunch of um, flying unicorn little trinkets oh, let me see. I brought them all out and I wrap them I tie them to the to the knots and I just I don't know I just picked a few that I like uh oh my things are falling here is 
a little music note and um, flowers just fell sorry okay let's see this should have another one but I don't know where it is another one. Oh, 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 oh. sorry I'm not looking for things everything is dropping it's terrible okay there we go the last one is a little birdhouse oh yeah they're so cute oh no I look at like a little clock like a cuckoo clock okay so what I did I basically wrapped it around Gosh, everything is getting tangled I think I'm nervous today sorry guys I haven't done this in a while okay so what I did is I basically wrapped it around a few times and I think it was three times I mean this we used to do in the old days as we call it I think I'm only gonna be able to do it twice but it's okay it will still look nice I guess my string is shorter this time this is a uh, Prima jute vine I'm not actually sure of the color maybe mustard but I'm not exactly sure that's the only color I didn't know what this was maybe it's one of the girls knows um, so um, the way to tie it I mean I'm sure I'm not like the biggest the uh, best at tying things but I learned from before by tying lots I used to have a job when I was 16 and my first job was uh, wrapping pres Chris like presents so during, during the Christmas season in one of the big box stores and I learned how to tie different things and and wrap presents I guess that was my first job and then my second job was also doing the same thing but for the mall which was cool okay so here is I tied the I only did it twice but I can play around with it and then what I did is of course I weaved this through one on this side Oh, oops, sorry, wrong side. Okay. No, I don't like it on this side. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, I'm not a perfectionist at all, right? Those are you guys are going to comment how I am or not. I see, but it needs to face in this direction. And then I want the birdhouse on this one. Yeah, that's exactly what I did, Cynthia. I, I wrapped gifts for free. That's exactly what I did. I was I, I worked at a at um at one of the stores, and then our mall to just bring in customers, offered that uh, for all the customers to come in if they bought something from the from the mall, they had to show us the receipt, and we would give them we would wrap it for free in the mall itself. They and it was crazy around Christmas. For obvious reasons oh I can't get this through wait wow so tough to get it through ah, it's bunching up I don't think it's gonna fit no okay no I cannot do it it's gonna go so it's gonna be two of them I like my cuckoo clock but it's not gonna work it has too small of a hoop um, so do I need a knot so yeah it could be mustard oh thanks jennifer okay okay one last attempt to fit this cuckoo clock in let's try it through the other one i know sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna lick this this is the way how my mom taught me you lick the end it's still not working come on No, I'm not able to do it. Never mind. Okay, we're not using the cuckoo clock. Sorry, cuckoo clock. So I'm just gonna make a bow and let the rest hang on. And we're gonna put this aside. And just stick the bow a little bit in because it's kind of sticks on top of the picture. I don't like that. Okay, there we go. So it looks like a little nice gift wrap present. Okay, right, the next thing I'm going to do and I'm going to get some of my uh, white flowers and I'm going to spray them with some gold foil spray. Now you see this spray? 
it's the one I use the most. I don't know why, and I'm not sure how this one is the most. I think I've refilled it already three times. This is my third time refilling, and it's as good as new. So it's really, um, oh, by the line, I guess she's leaving. Okay, I don't know, too bad. Um, so I really love these flowers. I'll show you. Oh, these Rodanth flowers. I don't know how to say that word, but they're really cute. They come in different ones. There's these ones. There's the leaf ones, and there's one more. There's the thing that's probably what fell. Here it is. And these ones. All three of these I'm going to be using on this layout. But the ones I'm going to spray are these, um, these, and these. Okay. And one of oh no no one other one. The flowers are being sprayed in the gold foil, and the um, and the leaves are gonna are going to be sprayed in the antique gold. Really, two of my favorite colors from the color blooms. I picked a few of the. Let me see how many leaves. One, two, three. I think there's about three leaves, maybe four. So I picked some of these like maple leaves, kind of looking leaves, and I sprayed them. And I just realized that I forgot my paper towel downstairs. So it's gonna have to do on my mat. Okay, there we go. There's four leaves. And then I have one, two, three, four, five. And then about five of these flowers. And let's see. I like the little ones, but it doesn't have to be only the little ones. Let's pick different sized ones. Okay. There we go. This one's too big. Let's pick this one. Okay. Good. Now, I love the reason why I love these is because, first of all, the box is huge. There's so many flowers in them, which is amazing. And the second reason is because you can spray them any color you want. Really. It's like they're the best flowers because of that. And, um, okay. So hold on, let me move things aside, move things away. And this is how I used, oh wait, I have a piece of, of paper towel here, an old one. I was doing another project today, and I want to be able to tell you which one, but I was using the back of this paper towel, and now I can use it again. So you want to get some of the of the makeup flakes on it so you want to be able to have some of the shine because it doesn't look it here but once it dries it looks really neat it looks like a very very glittery and shiny like shimmery that's the right word let me move them aside oh oops missed some here and these ones were painted in this Oh, I love this. And I also sprayed these a little bit with gold, gold shimmer, just a tiny bit. Although the antique gold actually, although it looks brown, actually has gold in them, in it. So again, this is going to put aside, I'm going to put this aside for drying. And I'm going to get, uh, no, that's not a good place to put them. Hold on, sorry. Um, I want to put them in front of me. And then I'm going to get the layout back the layout because I want to be able to um, dry it a little bit so now I've let it like sit for a little bit and when you dry it like this although this the paste is the worst because they take the longest to dry so I'm literally going to just sit here a little bit and watch the chat And because I let it wait, and I know you cannot see, but it's actually starting to get some small crackles in them. The thinner paste, the thinner areas, tend to dry up faster. Obviously, it will take about 24 hours for it to fully dry, but as long as the surface is dry, just because I'm also very impatient in a way, I, I, I like starting to, I work on it, like, even if the surface is, just the surface to touch is dry, even if inside some of the areas are not. So, 
Yeah, so um, I just did a masking. I don't know. Costume Diva. I don't know what's your name, but um, I don't know which one you because I wish the names were all appeared so I would know people's names. But um, yeah, I just masked it with a uh, wood grain frame and some uh, gold crackle from Prima. Okay. Now before I let it fully dry, just because we, we don't have that much time, uh, I did add some spray also onto the background and I'm going to do that right now. And what I did is I just, what I like doing is two things. First I like spraying and like adding some in the center of the area, in the center area, I like adding some color. And if it's too much, you can just dab it. And you can use the dabber to actually create some splatters, okay? Oh, not a dabber, this is a wipe, not a dabber. And you can do the same thing here. Okay. And that's only because I'm rushing. I mean, otherwise I would let it pull in because it looks really nice. You see, it just kind of brings that gold shiny uh, shine out. And then I am going to spring spray on it too. So what I like to do is I like to getting these beautiful uh, splatters on. And there's two ways of doing it. You can do what I'm doing, which is actually going up and down with the thing. And, or you can do this. This is a really cute trick that I've I learned from somebody. It's like actually tapping the nozzle and it makes these perfect circles. It looks really good and it makes even smaller ones. How cool is that? You see, I'm tapping it with anything. You can tap it with a pen, I mean, with a, with any kind of stick. I'm also going to use some of the antique gold and I'm going to, I think just splatter with that one because yeah, I want to get some of these. And again, when you're splattering, I mean, obviously you're not gonna get anything perfect. Don't expect to get perfection. You want to get splatters. Splatters are not perfect. Um, the whole point of them is that they look like they've been done randomly. Because if you want perfect splatters, you might have make you might as well do dots. And if you're doing really lightly, what I like about this is that it actually dries really quickly and nicely. So there you have. There you go. You see, I have the. I have the splatters and now I'm just going to dry it again. Yay! Oh, too bad, Julianne, that you cannot see me. Your <laughs> Cynthia, just splatter away. It's really not hard. There's so I actually have a video. Um, have one of the videos and one of my YouTube's YouTube channel that I show four different ways of creating splatters so maybe go there and just check them out because it really really helps check it really helps like if you if like certain certain people have a easier time with certain splatters than with others so this way you could actually uh, learn and it's crackling really nicely I know you can't tell, it's very hard to tell from so far away, but when I raise it, it's just going to get the shadows because my camera is is above the, the lamps that I have above my head, so it's really hard. No. You just have to make little splatters. Just put, just dip it one time into the, into the bottle, the nozzle into the bottle, the little stick inside, and then take it out and literally either work it up and down up and down or like I showed you take a little pen and just knock it really lightly you'll see you'll get perfect splatters oh I'm so I'm dry okay good so this is all dry let me clean up and we're gonna start setting up the layout I mean I know it takes a long time for everything else but now we've set up and what I did the reason why I did the two sides because I knew that the photo wanted to I wanted the photo to be in the middle and it just kind of gave and um, some texture on this side and some texture on the other side. And I wanted the, um, the layout to go uh, horizontally to make it seem as if we're walking into it or walking out of the forest. 
Well, most of my layouts, I what I like doing is most of them is I like taking the person into the scene and making you feel like you have been, you were there with us at that forest, which is, this is a forest right near our house, and it's just gorgeous in the middle of the fall. Now I'm going to add flowers, which of course are my favorite. Oh no, before I add the flowers, let me do one more thing because this is another thing that needs to be dried up, and that is this. These shabby chic treasures, the Victorian lamps. Um, it, these are just really, really, really beautiful. They came in the last Prima collection, uh, last Prima release, uh, mid release, and I just love these. I use them all the time. I don't know why, but I have to use them all the time. So, um, oh, okay, one second. So, what I did is I actually also. Um, sprayed it with the gold foil another thing that i've done with them is that i've used um alcohol inks i've used the copper alcohol inks and i wanted to use the gold alcohol ink on this but it's dried up and it doesn't work so i have to um i couldn't use it let me just take this back for a second and i'm just going to spray it so it dries up with my flowers well, um, yeah there you go i just literally sprayed it and that's it and then i'm going to let it dry Okay, back to my layouts. Sorry, I'm like scattered brain today. So, um, so here's the layout, and I'm gonna start putting all the flowers together. Oh, the other thing we're putting is these vines. I am so happy Prima came out with vines. This release, these are like just amazing. They're called I don't know what they're called, but five seven eight two seven five is a is the number. And I just love my vines. I just love them because I love cutting them up and using them for different parts of my layout. And here it is, and I'm going to cut them. I cut them into, let me see how many pieces I cut them into, like almost three. So I think I usually what I do is I can kind of find the ends of them. And I cut here. And I try to play. Obviously, it's not the, the layout is not going to come out exactly like my other one. But close enough, I'm going to try my best just to show you more or less how it works. Okay, so one of the things is like I wanted to create a motion, of a, a horizontal motion of the layout. So the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to anchor my picture with a little piece of... Um, a little piece of foam tape just so I know more or less where things are going to go. I only put one in the middle just so I can tuck things underneath and it won't suck. And then after I secure it with other things, I just want to make sure that I know where things are and that things don't move. I can always move this a little bit just because um, um, I, have, uh, I have a little piece of foam, but at least I am not stuck. Um, so I'm like kind of like playing around with it. And I love these flowers. These are these are also called Rodin's. They're what brand? I mean they're prima, but I mean what number? 577-742. And they're very nice also. These are my favorite. One of my favorites. There's so many favorites. This whole collection is really, really good. I have different uh, sizes of them. And basically I'm just gonna play around until I wait. I like the way things are and I try I want to try not to cover too many things um, so I'm trying to kind of create balance between the photos so if I'm I know we have that rule of three of if, if you know so I'm kind of trying to create the, the rule of three balance I mean you don't have to do that I just like doing that but you don't, again you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, this leaf looks too big to me. Can you guys see? Okay, I'm good. Um, okay, and then this one can go like over here. All right, now getting back to these ones. Okay, I'm just going to, for a second, bring them here to the side. I just want to give them a little quick dry, just so I could use them. And I know they're off the screen a little bit, but I'm just drying the flowers that I sprayed before, especially the leaves. Sometimes they don't fully dry before I use them, but I just um, want to make sure they're at least 
a little bit dry, at least to the touch. Yay. Okay, good. See, just a few seconds, just to, they're not fully dry, but they'll be dry at least to the touch. And I can use these. Oh, I'm making such a mess here. Okay. I want to use these to put in between. So again, try to kind of, you have to play around with flowers. I mean, you have to really play around with them to see where they fit. Not everything fits properly everywhere. So you need to, what's, you need to see what's pleasing to the eye and go with that. Some things may look, may look not right. And then you know, you know that, well, maybe that flower shouldn't be there type thing. And you tuck in, I like, I love tucking in flowers. Um, and what I did is I tried to get different fall colors. I mean, these, these colors from, from these look very, um, very golden looking. So this is why I wanted to use the gold so much. Um, and I play around, you see, I don't like it over there. So I'll play and I think I'll put the leaf here. Now, I just realized, for example, I just realized that my layout is very skewed to the right. So what I'll do is I'll actually, this is what happened before. So I must have placed, I'm kind of covering the whole pattern over there. So what I'm doing is I'm going to move everything a little bit over. And this is why I only put that little piece before, because now I can move it over easily without having to like rip everything apart. And now it's centered again. And then I'll make it stronger. Oh. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna have one more leaf. And I think that could go, this one can go here. Okay, so let's see. Uh, not sure I'm liking it, hold on. Do I have any more flowers left? Oh, I have one more leaf left, okay, good. So. Not sure how much I'm liking this. I think some of them need to kind of go underneath here. Okay, that's better. Mm -hmm. I know this is what happens. You end up playing with the flowers until you really, really like the way they look. And if you don't like it, you move them around. Once you know where you want to place them, that's when you glue it all. There we go, I like that better. See? No, that looks too even. And it has to go here. There we go. So I think, yeah, I think this is pretty nice. What do you guys think? Okay, good. Not, not that you can answer me, but that's what I'm saying. Um, I just noticed that, before I glue this, I just noticed that my metal piece uh, needs just a little bit more spray. So this is the last thing I'm adding. I'm just letting it dry again. Sprayed it again and let it dry. In the meantime, I'm gonna glue these. Um, we don't have to go over the glue situation. Everybody knows Fabri-Tac. Um, my husband is in Pittsburgh today and I and he's going, he took my son on a road trip to watch uh, the Maple Leafs uh, play at Pittsburgh. And he's buying me more glue because I'm running out. So it's excellent. I told him, just take some Joanne coupons. And he's so good. He goes and he buys me um, some like glue for the 40%. And I, and I told my son, who is 13, that he can now, he's old enough that he can actually buy me the glue too. So they're going to go with two coupons and get me. Yeah, the Fabri-Tac glue. Otherwise, I run, I use this like... I use this so much. That's basically what happens. And basically what happens is that as you're gluing the layout, and you're gluing the pictures, they kind of get stuck to the background. And so does your actual um, layout here. You can actually glue it to the flowers. That way it will hold together. Wait, look at this. Sorry, some of it 
This is a very gooey glue too. Okay. I don't know what I did before this glue. I remember sticking things with foam tape to make them like stand up. And I'm thinking to myself, what was I thinking? In 20 years, in two years, I think they're all going to, um, they're all going to like come apart. Too bad they're in boxes, so nobody will be able to tell. I don't think my kids are just gonna take all those boxes probably when they're older, pick maybe a few layouts and the rest are gonna throw in the garbage. But at least I'm having fun creating, so that's enough. That's good enough, right? Okay, I'm sorry. It's really odd to be quiet when you're scrapping for, and you're, as people are watching you. I'm trying to make conversation, although I think it's like odd that I'm doing that. I think it needs an extra flower here. There. So for example, some of these, and this is what I know. I'm gonna squish that one there a little bit. And I think, let's see, is there any more with the yellow thing? Oh, there's another one with the yellow thing on top. Mm -hmm. You know what? I think I was, sometimes like, even when they're glued, they look, the nice thing about fabric tech, it doesn't dry up right away. So you can move it around. And I liked it like this. Just added a little bit more flower, a few more flowers there. You see, kind of filling it out. I like filling uh, the area. Oh, I don't like this one. If you guys don't like this one, I don't like that one. I don't think you guys care, but I'm just saying. Oh, there's a nice one. I should have put that one there. Mm, there's no more room. No more room. Okay, let's see. Does, can, should I put that one there? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I last flower. Okay. The other thing that I did is I used these beautiful embellishments from Flying Unicorn. Oh, where is my other one? I'm missing one. Okay, so I took a few out because you know what? The, the clock that I used here, well, I only had one of them. And isn't it beautiful? I just love this one. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to try a different one for for this one, for this layout. But you know what, I'm missing one of the, oh no, here it is, okay. So, one of the things I did is I wanted to, I just felt everything was going this way and I felt like we needed some way, somehow, something to go in the opposite direction. So I used these two uh, little, um, what do you call these? Embellishments, metal trinkets, I don't know. And I kind of stuck them up here and the other one it's kind of stuck like this. It kind of framed the picture or kind of, um, not framed. What's the, what I, what the word am I looking at? Anchors the picture, anchors it. So before I stop anything, I just want to put a little bit more foam tape here, just to kind of hold everything together. Let's put some, now that we know where everything is going, we can, we can glue, we can use some tape to push. Okay, there we go. So now we have it like this, and then I'm gonna glue the metal embellishments. The beautiful about uh, the beautiful thing about oh you guys Okay, oh, somebody, sorry, I'm, I'm reading what you guys are trying to say about this page. I think you're talking about this strip, strip, right? You know what, I used to remove it all the time before I started layout. But once you start designing for certain companies and they ask you to write down the numbers and the names, I wouldn't remember, um, I wouldn't remember what who it was. And yes, it's saying that like somebody would taped it to the back, but truthfully, I just couldn't be bothered. I started designing. It doesn't even bother me. I don't even notice it. And I'm sorry for those who, who that it bothers. Um, hope not too much. 
Oops. Okay, so which side am I going to? Okay, so there we go. And then what do you guys think? Let's see which one fits better. I kind of took two of them out and I thought, mm, which one would look nice? The owl or the thing? And I think this will look much nicer. And it's kind of like here under the photo. Oh yeah, that looks so pretty. Okay, good. Oh, I don't want to cover the moments part. So, uh, sorry, one second. So here it is. There we go. So this kind of anchored a picture in all three directions. It gave it, even though the movement is horizontal, uh, I like the fact that it was um, it was giving it a vertical anchor. Um, the next thing is uh, some titles, and what I did, oops. Uh, is use some of the Save in Crystals. Um, I don't know, I grabbed whichever one. I needed these clear ones, so these like golden ones. So this one is Coffee Break, but it could be any of them. And I also use this is from the word stickers from the Thought Keeper collection from Seven Dots, and I use a few of the a few of the words so I already have this moments thing here so I thought hmm I can do amazing moments I was trying to read through all the things and I use and here's the amazing I kind of cut well, it doesn't really matter I used I go underneath a little bit mm, no I need to cut them a little bit sorry it's not coming out exactly the same I guess I'm going to put it over the picture. There we go, amazing. And then I had another one that says, Remember and Forever. Let's see. Oh, let me just put this moment is just right. I like that, which is really nice too. And I, I can put it right over here. Again, it gives it another way, another horizontal um, um, kind of movement when you do this. Okay, and I'm going to also add some of these things, some of these like saving crystals. Oops, maybe not something like this. So I like to just add a little bit more texture. This is how you add more texture to the to the layout. So again, the same as the flowers, kind of see where where things where they they go well. I don't always like have a rule about where they should go and I kind of try to spread them around using different sizes. Um, I'll kind of like putting the, the smaller ones on the outside and the bigger ones closer to the layout. I don't know, that's just more appealing to my eye, but it doesn't have to be the way you like it. You might like it differently and that's okay. Mm, let's see. No. See, if I don't like it, I will not, I will have to move them around. And one, I think, here. And one, no, that's way too, like, not in the proper of that. Okay, good. So, this is more or less the layout. I had some of this, I don't know why it's not, it's, let me just have to dry this up because it's not working. This is the... I have to dry because it's not drying up properly. Um, oh, you know what, guys? Never mind. I know what I did. It was I did use an alcohol ink because, like, as you can see, it's not really taking. I'm gonna show you. It's like let me go get the alcohol ink that I used. Sorry guys, I'm back. Just need to needed to go get that. So I use this alcohol ink. It was called Latte, and it just you know what? They're really good for metals. And I just kind of 
Now, here it is. Sorry, can you see what I'm doing? Oh yeah. So I just spread it on top and then you dry it out. The alcohol links work way better on metal just because um, they take to the surface while water-based things. And I also have some butterscotch. I'm just going to mix them up a little bit. Oh no, that one is too orangey. Never mind. I won't. I must have used another color. Okay. And I'm just going to dab them a little bit. As you can see, um, they don't come out. It doesn't come off. Like once it's on the metal, it's on the metal. Okay. Just drying it a little bit. And then I'm going to add it to the page. Oh, it's probably going to be hot. So what I did is I added it kind of on the side. Again, this, this helped me with the, with the move, with the vertical movement of the paper. I just want to put it a little bit higher up just so I don't want to cover the title. There we go. So let me glue this together. One second. Okay. I see there's a discussion about prices of glue. It is expensive in Canada even more. So that's one of the things that that I try to buy in the US whenever I go because the prices here are ridiculous. Um, but I do get my foam tape for really cheap. I get like the whole roll for like a dollar twenty or something like that, which is really nice. Sorry, I'm just spraying here on the side with some cold foil. The last thing I want to do is that I want to add a little bit of highlights. Oops, sorry, I'm looking for a right. I want to I want to add a little bit of highlights to the leaves, some golden highlights, just a little bit. Don't over exaggerate, right? And oh, look what I did! There I go. And this, and some of the flowers too. These brownish flowers. And if you missed any of the white around, the, and you can just add it. And that's basically it. It like I mean, trying to think if there's anything else. Nope. Look, this is my layout. How easy is that? And on time. Whoa, I even have a few minutes to spare. What do you think? And by now, it really crackled. I know you can't see it, but it's really crackled. Um, and everything kind of matches. Everything matches the tree, the trees, and the and the leaves. And I just really, really like the way this turned out the first time. And I even like it more on the second time too. Uh, so I just have a few announcements. Let me turn things around and one second, I will turn around the camera. Hold on. Oops. Sorry. Now I'm upside down. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, why, how do I, why doesn't it? Oh yeah, there it is. Sorry about that. Okay. There I am. Hi. <laughs> So a few announcements. There's quite a few, so just listen up. Uh, there is four days left for the Flying Unicorn Gives Back, and we need 200 uploads to meet our goal of 1,000. So please get busy and start uploading your layouts. It can be an old layout. doesn't have to be anything new. could be anything you want. Um, for each uh, layout uploaded to the gallery, um, Flying Unicorn is donating a dollar. So we're aiming for a dollar per layout. So we're aiming for a thousand or more. That would be great. So please get going and, and, um, and upload them. The next week uh, we have Song at the Ustream channel. I think it's December 3rd. And uh, but stay tuned for Black Uni Black Unicorn Day, which is this upcoming Friday, celebrating uh, Black Friday. And store wide, you will wait. Just wait for the emails. You're gonna get lots of sales, the best sales ever. For this week, you have 10% off all items which are in the, of the U stream of my show of, that I did today. 
And last but not least, I wanted to, oh no, one second. If you did not get your kit uh, on the pre-order, um, the limit, a limited amount will be available on November 30th at 12.01 a.m. And last but not least, I wanted to wish everyone a happy, everyone in the U.S. and in the world, happy Thanksgiving for you all. And please, we have to be thankful for everything that we have, especially wishing you all health and happiness. And may God bless you with everything you want in this life. Amen.